couple of days ago now, Fallout 4 got a new update. Typically, I am pretty quick to cover the new updates to this game within the past 24 hours or so, but this time around, although the update was shipped a couple of days ago, it did have some problems on release. So what this update was, was bringing some new Creation Club content and other fixes to Fallout 4. Several things that were released previously in Creation Club had certain bugs fixed around them. You can see some of those on screen right now. But separate from that, we also got the addition of VR Workshop. This is something we knew that was on the way. It was discussed and teased in the past. Unfortunately, due to some other issues behind the scenes, it did not make its way into the previous Creation Club batch. So we got it in this separate update just a couple of weeks later. And this is actually actually a pretty interesting addition to Fallout 4, as it really is a almost DLC sized addition. It brings more new content and features to this game than almost anything in the past, and I would say the reason this one feels so significant is just that the new features it brings in are quite substantial, they're things some people will definitely use a lot. And this is one that I definitely could have seen be one of the Workshop DLCs when Fallout 4 was in its typical release cycle, although nonetheless on release it did have some issues and everything shipped properly. Separately, some users were having issues with crashing to desktop on launch after the update went live. That should mostly be resolved now. If you're on PC, you could always verify the integrity of your game files if you are still having that problem. Separately, of course, with this update, it does break some Fallout 4 script extender dependent mods and Fallout 4 script extender itself has to be updated. I think due to the quick succession between this update and the past one, things were a bit slower on that front. Even now, a couple of days later, there are still a few mods that have yet to receive updates, so that is something Something to keep in mind, if you haven't updated yet, it may still be worth holding off. But now that we got all of that out of the way, let's actually take an in-depth look at VR Workshops, the new piece of Creation Club content for Fallout 4 on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. What VR Workshops is going to do is add in quite a bit of additional and new functionality into Fallout 4's workshop mode, this in the way of new virtual workshops that can be set up and accessed. And do keep in mind throughout this video that this is 1000 points, which roughly translates to $10, although the smallest point bundle you could actually get that has enough points will be $15, so it's not like you could just spend $10 alone, you'd have to spend more than that to get this. In order to access one of these, you'll have to place down a new VR pod in a typical settlement in Fallout 4, connect that to power, connect that to a terminal, and then you can select which of the four new maps you want to gain access to. Then you jump into the pod and we'll get delivered to one of these. These are now four new VR workshops. We have the Grid World, which is a very custom kind of build-it-yourself map, it almost looks like a test cell, and obviously the one with the least character. Separately, you also have the Atomic Crater. This is effectively going to be part of the Glowing Sea, but in its own little standalone workshop. You can see it's walled off, but all of these are pretty large. And we'll go over some of the features, but you could definitely take advantage of their size. Next, we have one that may look familiar, that with the Capital Wasteland GNR Building Plaza. This world space originally was for something separate, including with Creation Club, but considering they already brought it into Fallout 4, it seemed like it just made sense to include it with this new addition also. Although, compared to the other version, this one actually doesn't have functional interior buildings. You cannot go into the GNR itself or the little landing pad, and it's without a doubt the smallest of the four. But what is probably the coolest and the largest, last but not least, we have the Desert Island. This place is massive and actually really cool. It basically is a little island in the middle of a body of water. Unlike the other ones included on this list, it's actually divided into four separate workshops. This likely due to the sheer size of it and just some technical restrictions behind the scenes. But be warned because if you are building on the edge of one, you will have to stop building and continue into the other if you actually want to kind of bridge that gap a little bit. But it actually is just really pretty in general. So that's all the new world space you gain access to, but what exactly can you do in these new VR workshops? Well, one, they are immense world spaces that have a much higher settlement building limit. By default in Fallout 4, as many of you probably know, you can hit a build limit if you place too many things down in your settlement. This will be one, higher here, but also at all of these workshops, you will have unlimited resources. So assuming you have the perks to craft it, you could build anything in the settlement menu. There are no restrictions like you could find in the typical base game. So if you want to, you could place down or build a lot lot of stuff in these areas. You also do have the option to spawn in your own settlers here. In fact, that is the only way you get settlers in these. Although, and this we'll talk about a bit more later, you can only actually have a maximum of 20 settlers at a given time, and they're going to be new virtual settlers. So you are seemingly unable to 
actually trade with them. And when you kill them, they're just going to slowly fade away and disappear. But I think those animations are actually kind of cool. So taking that all together, you could probably connect some of those dots, start to see how this would be useful to a player, how some people could take advantage of it. You can build little cities here, have a ton of buildings all throughout. Although keep in mind that this is kind of on its own little island. You can't set up supply lines from these to your typical workshops because obviously you could just mass produce materials at these ones. And separately, even though you can set up food and water, you can't actually collect from them. They're going to contribute to overall happiness and the settlement requirement, but they're not going to give you yourself food or water. And you also can't add companions or transfer settlers to these. But that's really only one part of this. Outside of that, there are several other new and custom features that come with VR workshops. Right off the bat, there's actually going to be a variety of new settlement objects, 40 in total. These are basically just themed around either the desert island, which has quite a wide variety of things, a lot of beach going apparel, or just some thematically appropriate buildings or building plans. There's not a ton for this one, but but there definitely is a decent amount if you're going for that vibe. And then separately for the Capital Wasteland version, there's a lot of Capital Wasteland themed assets you can place here. Several of these will spawn by default, and actually a pretty important note with the Capital Wasteland one, although it is the smallest, it also is one of the only ones that really requires you to scrap some of the miscellaneous junk here that'll open it up quite a bit and give you a much larger building space. We could find things like buses and other city objects that would be relevant, and also some pretty OP water towers. But of course, with all of these new objects, you can place them in your virtual workshops, but you don't have to. You also can just use these in a typical settlement outside of these in regular Fallout 4. But the other major feature that comes with this are little attack modules you could place down. Basically, in your VR workshop, you can start or stop an attack mode, which, using these attack modules, will spawn a certain type of enemy. I'm not gonna list off every enemy, but in the background right now, you could see one of each type fighting each other. There's quite a wide variety here. All of the major factions or categories are definitely accounted for, and these guys will fight each other, they'll fight you, or they will fight yourself. Settlers. So this could be kind of cool because you can create little wars in your workshops. I actually used to make videos doing something fairly similar with console commands, but it is nice now cool to have that functionality somewhat built in. And if you stop the attack mode, it'll actually despawn all of those enemies. Although a pretty important disclaimer with this one, they actually won't hurt you. So they will attack you and you do have to use your own ammo when fighting back, but they won't deal any actual damage. I found this kind of weird, but I'll talk a bit more about some of my critiques after I go over all the features and then just some other miscellaneous features. You can change the music manually if you wanted to. There's actually some new music included for the Capital Wasteland one. Although I've literally never played Fallout 4 with music on because when you're recording videos and you cut back and forth, you could hear the music cut and it's kind of weird and jarring. So I don't really have an opinion on that. I always have music off. There's also something pretty new you could do with this, which is actually change the render mode. There's going to be several different takes on this. You can get sepia tone. You've definitely seen this before. It is just that specific look. Alternatively, you can do black and white. Also, pretty typical, it does create a decent or kind of cool aesthetic, or finally you can enter into the dream state. In effect, what this is doing is bumping the vibrance or brightness and contrast. Now that the other two, I couldn't really think of a good usage for. With the dream state, it definitely can make some of those colors really pop, and I could see some people liking that for images. Although granted, take into account, I am using an ENB while filming this. But then last but not least, you could also change the weather, which definitely can come in handy. But with that, it'll transition us into my more opinionated or my thoughts on this overall because the weather is a good transition there. So when you change the render mode or you change the music and you switch from one virtual workshop to another, which you could just do from this terminal, the music will stay the same as well as the render mode will stay the same, but the weather will change. Like the one thing I probably would want to stay consistent, like if I always want it to just be clear, I wish I could just set that and leave it. But of the three options, that's actually the one that will always revert back to one kind, which is a little frustrating. I feel like that shouldn't be a thing. Separate from that, there's actually no way to fast travel to or from these VR workshops. If you want to get to one of these, you're going to have to get into that little pod at one of your existing workshops. Although something that is kind of nice, you could actually set certain pods to go to certain ones every time. So I can make it so this pod will always go to Desert Island. This pod will always go to the Capital Wasteland so you don't have to manually switch around in a terminal. But one of the weird parts on Desert Island, as I mentioned, it's huge, such that there are actually four individual workshops on this. There's no way to like fast travel around to those other ones. But they do get their own map markers and you will discover them, but every time you travel to Desert Island, you're going to spawn on that same beach location, and you might have to run really far to get to the other workshop on the other side of the map. I definitely feel like fast traveling to or from these would be pretty handy and just an overall nice quality of life feature, or even something like a synth grenade. And although these are super useful, 
example, I'm not someone who's super into the workshop mode in Fallout 4. I don't have a ton of fun with that. What I do have a ton of fun with is Sim Settlements, and I did test it out to see if this would work with that mod, because I imagine a lot of people might try that. And yeah, it actually works to a pretty cool effect. You could create these fairly large and sprawling little cities on these islands. Especially on Desert Island, you could have 80 settlers in total on that map, so you could create some pretty cool stuff with those unlimited resources. But of course, you can't send those back to the regular Commonwealth settlements. And really, my take on this overall is it feels cool, but niche. Like for the everyday user, it's probably not worth the $10 because I don't think a ton of people in Fallout 4 really use settlement mode all that much. Like there's some hardcore and dedicated builders that will probably really like this. They'll like some of the new locales, they'll like some of the new options and functionality. There are certain things that are a little bit frustrating, like that 20 settler limit does seem kind of odd, especially in comparison to the vast limit you have for building. Hopefully at some point a mod will fix this. I'm sure there'll be several mods around this one, especially in the building community of Fallout 4. But really, that's my overall take on it. Is it worth $10? I think if you really like building, or if you really think, yeah, I want to build something massive at these, then yeah, there's a subset of Fallout 4 players that I think this will be really appealing to, and the $10 is definitely justified. But at the same time, I think overall, most Fallout 4 players aren't really playing for these reasons. One thing I actually would have liked to see is like a non-cheat mode. Like the Desert Island's just cool. Like I would just want to build my Sim settlement space there. It would be nice if I could use it to set up supply lines, get a fast travel point there, and just kind of use it as a dedicated settlement and turn off all the free resources and ability to spawn settlers. But yeah, that is a look at VR workshops, what is likely one of the biggest content drops we've seen for Fallout 4 from Creation Club thus far. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments down below. There certainly is quite a bit to be desired from this. I think a lot of this can be easily fixed with mods or even some updates. But until then, I thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you all next time. Later.